control system of a vehicle consists of a couple parts. The catalytic converter burns any leftover fuel so that the exhaust is a mix of CO2 and H2O. In a standard vehicle, such as the 2003 Camry that was used for this demonstration, the system uses two narrow-band oxygen or lambda sensors, one that is upstream of the catalytic converter and one that is downstream. The oxygen sensors measure the difference in oxygen levels between the exhaust and ambient air, and that information is used to regulate the air-to-fuel ratio in the internal combustion engine and determine the effectiveness of the catalytic converter. The narrowband O2 sensor used in this demonstration has a zirconia cell that is inserted in the exhaust pipe. The outer electrode comes in contact with the exhaust and the inner electrode contacts the reference air. The difference in oxygen between the two creates a voltage across the ceramic element. A balanced air to fuel ratio is 14.7 parts air to 1 part fuel and would result in a voltage output from the O2 sensor of 0.45 volts. If the air to fuel ratio is lean, more oxygen is present and the voltage will be closer to 0.1 volts. A rich air to fuel ratio means less oxygen and a voltage closer to 0.9 volts. The engine control unit is constantly trying to obtain a balanced air to fuel ratio, so the output voltage will often oscillate between high and low. This sensor has four wires. The two black ones are for the heater circuit. The sensor is more accurate at a constant temperature. The heater wires are connected to the 12 volt battery to warm up the sensor quickly during a cold start. The other two wires are the voltage signal and the ground. The vehicle used in this demonstration had the check engine light illuminated, so an OBD2 scanner was used to determine the likely cause was a malfunctioning O2 sensor. Therefore, an Arduino kit was used to take analog readings of each sensor's voltage. Additionally, the test was conducted again for fully functional upstream and downstream sensors to compare the results. The heater circuit was not connected, but each test was run for 8 to 10 minutes to ensure the sensors had ample warm-up time. Another test limitation to consider is this test is not sophisticated enough to monitor the engine control unit's air-to-fuel ratio compensation in relation to throttle position. For instance, the throttle opens to allow for more airflow when the vehicle accelerates. The O2 sensor voltage outputs could determine if there is any lag time evident in the air-to-fuel ratio. This could be a future research topic. The voltages for each sensor were graphed in reference to time. First of all, it is obvious that the upstream sensor is most likely the malfunctioning sensor. Any voltage fluctuations can be attributed to noise. It might be expected that its value would be zero volts if it's not working. However, the balanced air to fuel ratio voltage is 0.45 volts, so this could be a default. On the other hand, the voltages are fluctuating on the downstream sensor. The values are slowly increasing towards 0.45 volts which could be an indicator of air-to-fuel ratio corrections. For the replacement sensors, the voltage graphs are much more on target. As mentioned previously, narrow band sensors typically oscillate between high and low voltages as adjustments are made. In this case, the high voltage averages around 0.7 volts, while the low voltage is roughly 0.1 volts. Therefore, the average is 0.4 volts, which is close to the balanced air-to-fuel ratio voltage. The most notable change in the downstream sensor's graph is the increase in voltage average. A higher voltage means less oxygen, which indicates that the catalytic converter has effectively reduced the amount of unburned fuel.